Welcome back to our road trip. On the first episode of this series, we drove from Canberra to Gundagai with a song stuck in our heads. On the road to Gundagai. Visited a cultural landmark. Escaped from a prison. Let's turn that. <laughs> We're free! <laughs> Marvelled at a very rickety bridge before parking our van to sleep before the next day's adventures. Hello and welcome to our channel. This morning we woke up in Gundagai, grabbed some coffee and some breakfast and made our way to Adelong to this gold mine and waterfalls. The drive here featured lots of mountains and valleys and the occasional chimney ruins. A surprising amount of that in New South Wales. I didn't know that we had so many old chimney ruins, mm. which is basically all that remains from a building that has fallen apart. I guess it was the strongest part. Yeah, the only part they built from brick. The cool thing about Adelong is that it has an old gold mine and ruins, which is just behind us down there. This mine was used in around the 1870s and 1880s, and a lot of it's still standing, including some of the water wheels and the huge gold pan. And it looks like we can go down there and explore, although the problem with going down there is then we'll have to come back up again. Mm. <laughs> but I think we'll do it anyway, We'll Shall manage. We? Yeah, let's do it. Office that controlled all of the operations of the mine and if you ask me it's a little bit small I wonder if this was always a window or if it's just a window now that it's falling apart good view this is all that remains of the old battery and a battery is where they would crush rock and quartz and try and extract the gold from inside of it you can see that there's some old wheels and a little bit of the equipment that was in here but most of it is gone now so this is the water wheel that powered everything on site it had 64 buckets originally that filled uh, at about 31,000 litres per minute and created 3.5 horsepower per minute, which I'm not sure what that would be in straight horsepower. The water used to run down this area here straight into there and microwaves could be turned on. <laughs> <laughs> So this is one of the things that the water wheel powers. This is the buttle. It's kind of like a big gold pan. The whole thing was filled with water and spun in a circle. And hopefully the gold or pyrite extract would go to the edge and then they drain the water and go in there and get the good stuff. They use a lot of original terms here on the signs that we've never come across. So it's not too easy to make sense of it all, but we're trying. At this point, it's probably painfully clear that we know nothing about gold mining. So if you do, and we've stuffed all this up, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> There's no reverb in there. <laughs> Been lied to. You have no idea how excited he was to test out the reverbatory furnace, and it turns out it has not much to do with reverb. <laughs> so yeah, after the pyritic ore comes out of the bottle, which is the circular gold panning equivalent panny thingy, it's then delivered by a wheelbarrow up a ramp to the top of this furnace here, the reverberatory furnace, where they roast the pyritic ore to get rid of the sulphur, which just leaves the gold. And this furnace here is connected to the chimney that's all the way back there via an underground flue. It seems they tried a little bit to get rid of the toxic fumes. Put them 20 meters up the hill. And here we have the final area, the tailing pit, where the crushings are piped down and then sent back up to the buttle where they are then worked on for extracting the pyritic ore. So I think we might make our way back up all those stairs from the gold mine and see if we can find some apples. How do you like them apples? <laughs> So 
So we've made it to Wilgrow Orchards, just outside of Batlow, and we've picked up some good stuff by the look of it. I'm excited because they have a hopped cider, which I've never heard of. Hopped like a beer. We'll see how that goes. We also got a cherry cider, but the cherries aren't grown around this area. This is definitely apple country and two apple ciders. What did you go for, Dana? We got apple crisps, dried pear, and the piece de resistance. We got some ice cream. Apple ice cream. I'm sure Dana will have that finished within the next 10 minutes and can tell us all about it. Let's see how this hopped one goes. It's definitely apple cider. Yeah, just a hint of hop flavor thrown in there. But don't fear beer haters. It's nothing like a beer. It's very tasty. I'm going to try this ice cream now. It actually looks really natural. Cream, milk, apple juice, sugar, and egg yolks. And gluten free, which is most important. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had apple ice cream before. This would be interesting. It's quite good, it's quite good. Apple goes good in ice cream. Apples are sweet, ice cream is sweet. It's a great combination. You might have to help me though. There's a fair bit here. <laughs> it is lovely sitting here amongst the orchards though. My turn to try the cider. It's a very dry cider. Usually I prefer a sweet. There's something beerish in there, but I'm not sure if it's the dryness or the hops. Not that I try much beer, because obviously most beer has gluten in it, so I'm not an expert. I think it's time to try some apple crisps. Apparently they have dried apple, apple chips and apple crisps, and the apple crisps have just been dehydrated for much, much longer till they're crispier, so. Still not like a potato crisp, but pretty good. Like dried apple, but drier. <laughs> okay, dried pear. Mmm, sweet. Even sweeter than apple. Probably a little more moisture, but very similar to the apple crisps. They're both delicious. These will make good snacks when we get starving for the next few days. There is another more famous cider place around here called Batlow Cider, which is probably much more of a commercial operation. We're not sure if you can actually go in there and visit and do anything. If you can, let us and everybody else know in the comments, but we decided to support the smaller guy anyway and come to Wilgo Orchard. We made the best decision. I say that having not been to the other place, but nothing wrong with here. And look, I don't know if you can see, but superb landscape that the bushfires tore through. Yes, we did see, once again, lots of evidence of bushfires on the way here. And I know a friend lives near here and she spent a pretty gruelling summer fighting off fires the entire time. Once again, the fires ravaged everywhere. All right, one last thing to try. We won't get to all the ciders right now because we don't need to get drunk just yet. <laughs> but this one's a sparkling apple juice. Hey! You got it. Well, that is delicious. Mmm, really nice and sweet and sparkly, just like sucking an apple, but with sparkliness. <laughs> it's good, just trust me, it's good. Oh, oh, flavor country. That was superb. Totally different to the cider. The cider was very dry, this is sweet. Wow, the type of apple in that is just the best apple you could ever want. All right, I think it's time to move on. See you soon. <laughs> Next on our agenda was a stop to Pretty Parrot Distilling, which lives in the Oriental Hotel in Tumut. The actual distillery cellar door was not open that particular day, but the Oriental staff were able to hook us up with a tasting while we checked out the historical artifacts throughout the hotel. So, number one, the bathtub gin. Juniper, cardamom, I can smell the cardamom. Yeah, it's got the cardamom from Indian food. Does it make you go? <laughs> uh, I could do with a bit, I reckon a tiny bit of this fizz. Um, exactly the same, <laughs> it's just watered down. <laughs> Time for gin number two. This one's actually bathtub gin number two. And it's the lemon myrtle one. This, is this one's a silver medalist in London and in Australia. So, see if it lives up to the hype. A little bit lemony. Like limoncello, but not sweet. Not exactly a gin expert. I don't really drink gin, but today's the day that I learned all about it, I guess. The new one, rhubarb and something else. It's not on the menu yet. Mmm, bit of sweetness there. I like it. And this is the final gin, although we still have plenty of liqueurs to go after this. This one's the ruby gin, which is juniper, hibiscus, lily pilly, and grapefruit. 
Well, it's probably what lots of people enjoy in gin, but not my favourite. What do you think? Oh yeah. No, that's it's very strong with its flavours, so I think that'd be perfect with tonic or something like that. Let me just dunk a little bit of that. Sod wad in it. Sod wad? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nailed the ratio. That is perfection. Drink it. Yeah, okay, it's much better with soda water. That's one that deserves to be diluted, and then it's perfect. On to the liqueurs. This one is Bong Dong and Davidson Plum. Ooh, I like that. It's almost like cherry cough medicine, which is a flavor that some people really love. I'm one of them. Other people, not so much, but... Oh, it smells so good. Tastes so good. Kwondong, hey? That has a sweetness to it. It's like caramel. Maybe vanilla. Caramel and vanilla. Oh, I really like these as a liqueur. That's fantastic. Finally, a classic. Coffee. Couldn't resist. Yeah, that's good. Coffee's always good. <laughs> well, we're not quite done with the alcohol for the day, but we thought we'd better have a walk and sober up a little before the next one. So we've come to a park where there's a labyrinth. I don't know if it's too exciting, but we'll find out in a second. This is the Tumut Community Labyrinth for Peace. There's no cost to go here, and that's because it's actually a memorial for Armistice Day. Visitors are invited to contemplate their own life journey as they move along the pathway. Placed throughout the maze are all of the different planets in our solar system in the position that they were in on Armistice Day, which was the 11th of November 1918. I'm not too sure about the rest of the world, but in Australia, November 11th is also Remembrance Day every year, where we remember the sacrifice of our fallen soldiers. This was the perfect quiet place to stop before resuming our busy schedule for the rest of the trip. After navigating the labyrinth and going for a little walk downtown to check out the sights, we headed over to Tumut River Brewing Co where Jesse got himself a lovely tasting paddle. He was able to select whichever beers he wanted for the tasting, and I think he enjoyed them a lot. Tumut River Brewing Co is a brewery, so all of the beers were locally made. My favourite so far is the American Pale. It's just delicious. And I got a ginger beer. Gluten free option. Although they did have a couple of gluten free beers there as well, I think, but I opted for ginger beer because I don't really like it. And there's plenty of gluten free options here to eat as well, so maybe we'll order some food in a second. So we've had our fill of sampling Tumit's delicious alcoholic beverages and we've decided to pop our caravan park cherry tonight. <laughs> it's our first time staying in a caravan park. Well, is it? It's Just my this... first time ever staying in a caravan park. Really? Oh my god. No, it's not my first time. Um, how does it compare? <laughs> Similar to the rest of them. Basically, we just wanted to be able to shower tonight and charge some devices. Our six-way power board is currently getting a workout. This is the first time I've ever failed to find a free shower. Usually it always happens. There was just nothing around here. And there's severe water restrictions. No showers longer than 15 minutes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Where so. I come from, it's like no showers longer than three minutes. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but now we're heading down to the river, right? I think so. Yeah, it's, river, not, it's a bit of a car track. Maybe we weren't meant to walk down it, but... I'm trusting Jesse's directions. Well, River might have been overstating it, but the trees look cool, how they intertwine with each other. And there's really nice mountains in the distance over here. Pretty good view. And the sunset is probably the right time to see it because it's pink all through the sky. It's lovely. Yeah, before was just the creek. This is the actual river. Oh, little fish just jumped out of the water there. So that concludes our day around Adelong and Batlow and Tumut. And tomorrow we hope to head deeper into the snowies. If you want to see more videos, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button. I've never hit that on a single video in my life, but hit it. Definitely hit it. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. What he said. See you in the next one. <laughs> Sí.
<laughs> Find the gold in it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Is that right? Well, every area seems to be finding the gold, yeah. 